This video will be about geometric series. So when you are looking at a geometric series, first we need to know what a series is. And it's basically a list of numbers that usually have something in common. Um, so like we could do 1, 4, 9, 16. This series, what it has in common is they're all perfect squares. I had to do one squared to get the first one, two squared, three squared, four squared. Or I could do two, six, ten, fourteen. And the dot 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 just means keep going in the same pattern. So for this series, I'm adding four every time. This first one doesn't have its own particular name. When you add the same number every time, this is called arithmetic. And the last one we're going to talk about is the geometric. So geometric is a series where you're multiplying by the same number every time. And some of them are pretty easy to tell what you're multiplying by. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 again gives you 27, 9 times 3 gives you 27, 27 times 3 gives you 81. So this is our geometric series, when you're multiplying by the same thing every time. And there are some important things of the series. The first important thing is the first term. That will help us when we're getting ready to do the formula. The second important thing is this common ratio, what we're multiplying by every single time. Sometimes it's not as easy to see what the common ratio is going to be. So let's say we have the series 5, 35 over 2, 245 over 4, and 117, 1715 over 8. Now the way this is written, I have no idea what I would multiply 5 by to get 35 over 2. It's not as easy to see right off the bat what it is. So when you have a series like this, it's easiest to take the second term and divide it by the first term so that you can figure out that common ratio. If we do 35 over 2 divided by 5, I'm going to make this a decimal first. 35 divided by 2 is 17.5, and then 17.5 divided by 5 is 3.5. So 3.5 is our common ratio. We have to times every time by 3.5. So one thing these um, geometric series will ask you to do is to find the next three terms. If my series is 2, negative 4, 8, negative 16, what we would do is find our common ratio get from 2 to negative 4 using multiplication, we'd have to multiply by a negative 2. 2 times negative 2 makes negative 4. And you can double check. Negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. So it's following the pattern. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. So it followed the correct pattern, and now we just want to find the next 3. So we times by negative 2 again. Timesing by negative 2 would give us the next term of 32. And then we do it again. Multiply by negative 2 again, and we get negative 64. And one more time, multiply by negative 2 again, and we get 128. So the next three terms are 32, negative 64, and 128. Let's do one more example. of finding the next three terms. 
So on this one, I can easily identify what I'm dividing by, but we really want this in terms of multiplication. I can figure out, oh, I'm dividing by negative 4. That's pretty easy to see just right off the bat, but we need it by what we're timesing by. So I'm still going to do division to figure this out. I'm going to say, okay, what is 20 divided by negative 80? Well, that is negative 0.25, and you can check. If you multiply 20 by negative 0.25, it gives us 5. If you do it again, it gives positive 1.25. So now we're on to finding the next three terms. 1.25 times negative 1.25 is negative 0.3125. Now we're starting to get a lot of digits. Um, usually at this point, they're going to ask you to round it and say just negative 0.31. So round it to like the nearest hundredth. So if we were to do it again, we'd get 0 0.078125, which would round yeah, to be 0 0.09. And if we do it one more time, get negative 0 0.02, rounding it. They're also going to ask you to find whether a series is arithmetic or geometric. So when they do that, they're going to just give you random, a random series. You're not sure which one it is. You don't know if we're multiplying or adding. Um, so it doesn't matter which one you check first. I'm going to check addition first. So looking from 2 to 4, 2 plus 2 makes 4. Looking from 4 to 8, 4 plus 4 makes 8. So right now we know this is not arithmetic, this is supposed to match, and it doesn't. So now we check multiply. 2 times 2 makes 4. 4 times 2 makes 8. 8 times 2 makes 16. This is geometric. The last thing they are going to do with these kinds of geometric series is ask you to find the explicit formula. It's easy if we're just looking at the first couple of terms, but say we want the 100th term. We don't want to have to keep multiplying 100 times. So the formula for a geometric series is a sub n, where n is talking about what term you're working with. So if it was a sub 1, it'd be first term. a sub 2 would be the second term. Equals a sub 1 which is the first term, times r, that is that common ratio, what you're multiplying by every time, to the n minus 1. And again, is n is talking about whatever term you're trying to find. So let's say we have a sub n equals 5 times 3 to the n minus 1. And we want to find the first term, the sixth term, and the twelfth term. Well, the first term is easy because it's part of the formula. We know right off the bat 5 is the first term. So we know a sub 1 equals 5. The sixth term, we are going to have to plug it in. 5 times 3 to the 6 minus 1. Now I would make sure to do the subtraction first, and then I would plug it into a calculator. 5 times 3 raised to the fifth equals 1,000. 215. This is the sixth term is 1215. Now we find the twelfth term. I really should have put a sub 6 here since we're finding the sixth term, a sub 12 because we're finding the twelfth term. It's 5 times 3 to the 12 minus 1. Do the subtraction first and then plug it into a calculator. 
5 times 3 raised to the 11th is 885,000 and 735. And there's your three terms. Now instead of giving the formula, they could also just tell you the first term is 5. So if the first term... I've used 5 a lot. Let's do something else. Is 7. And the common ratio... is 1.75. find the tenth term. So according to our formula, a sub 1 was our first term, so we replace it with 7 because that was our first term. Our common ratio is 1.75 and we're looking for the tenth term. So they may ask for the formula first. The formula itself would not involve what you're trying to find. Then they may just put the answer. I think they really like put comma and then the answer would come next. But first we have to find it. So the tenth term, we plug in 10. 10 minus one is nine. And then plug it into a calculator. 7 times 1.75 raised to the tenth. And we get a big long decimal. We're just going to do two digits after. 1885.7. The 2 would round up to a 3 because the 5 next to it is bigger, is 5 or bigger. So 1885. Point Seven, three. So the formula would be this. The amount would be the 1885.73. That is the tenth term. The last thing they talk about is um, applying it to a word problem. Say you have some sort of ball, like a basketball. That probably looks more like a baseball. I honestly don't know how to draw a basketball, sorry. Um, but if you drop it, it's going to bounce. And with each bounce, it doesn't go quite as high as the one before it. So they have a way to calculate how much it's decreasing by. So let's say each curved path has 37% of the height of the previous path. And let's say it's been dropped from one meter. Um, so one meter as this gets smaller, meters are not going to be very good to measure this in. So we're going to change that to centimeters first, just because centimeters, it's easier to measure short distances. So in centimeters, one meter is 100 centimeters. So we need to make our own formula. Oh, first they have to ask us something to find as well. Let's say we want to find the height on the fifth bounce. So our first term when we're applying this will be the height it's been dropped from. So our first term is 100 and the common ratio is that percentage that it's dropping by. Now when we have a percentage, if we're going to use it in a math equation, we have to change it to a decimal. A percent is really out of 100, 37 out of 100. And when you plug that into a calculator, that gives you 0.37. So 
So our common ratio is 0.37. And if we want to know the height on the fifth bounce, we put in 5 for n, 5 minus 1 will give us 4, and 100 times 0.37 to the fourth is 1.87 centimeters. So that concludes our discussion on geometric sequences.